Hey everyone, it's another uh, session of week five of the machine learning class from Coursera with Andrew Eng, and it's back to just Thomas and I. How are you, Thomas? I'm doing amazing, and um, I thought you'd be more excited that it was, I mean, am I not enough? Do we have to have Kyle? Do we have to have Brett? I mean, that, that, that we have to have him? Well, I have to say, I really liked um, having Brett next to me because it was like easier. It's easier to have like a conversation here. I'm trying to look at the camera and not look at your face. And, and I don't know what to look at, and it gets a little, like, frustrating. And, and it was nice just having Brett. I kind of, like, let it go, and I felt like we had, like, a better conversation. That's all. I mean, I love you, but seriously, these, like, looking at you through a camera is getting all exhausting. Well, you're supposed to look at the camera. If, if, I mean, we're week I'm five looking. in, and I guess I should have told you that week one. I thought No. <laughs> you told me. You told me, but it's still a little frustrating. That's all. Just a little, a little, a little, little. So, anyways, week five, what did you think about it? Man, uh, more neural neural network. And I'll be honest, man, I'm kind of week five. You know, I was kind of, we, we were talking a little bit in the show prep here. Yeah. And I'm so done with this course. <laughs> <laughs> I love Stay it. tuned, everyone, to find out how I really feel at the end. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully I'll get through it. But to me, as a technologist, oh, man, you know, the math. And it's really good to understand the principles behind, behind some, some of this. But some... I don't know. Maybe I don't need as much depth as I thought. And I mean, things can change, right? You know, d different things in your career as you go forward where maybe you do need it. But I right now at this point in my career and even in the past, I've stayed more on the technology implementation operations side yeah. of coding and some of the other pieces. And so this is not my strong suit. But I mean, they say you're supposed to work your weaknesses. But man, it feels really good to work your strengths. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I always say my favorite line is you need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I'm definitely like uncomfortable. I think it's good that it's working other parts of my brain, but I'm I'm absolutely 2000% with you in the sense of I'm just kind of like waiting and I'm I'm ready and I keep counting down. I'm like, "Wow, we've we've reached that point. We've I can start looking, I can start going downhill and it's it's I have to say there's a little bit of excitement and I don't know quite know what to fill up my time afterwards, but I have been enjoying just reading more and um reading some of those other aspects right some of those books having more of that conversation and that's really what i like like it's been more, certainly beneficial for me yeah maybe maybe this series will kind of you know can feel uh, you know i've been kind of toying around with uh you know having you know doing doing some other kind of live coding or something like that and maybe maybe taking that time since i've kind of already been you know packing that away and doing something yeah. where it's like you know i can get a little more hands on with it like i'd like a little more honestly i'd like more business use cases when i'm when i'm doing some of them too so i know everybody everybody hates word problems they say but word problems are fun right you know it's yeah. like so if we had a business you know if we were solving maybe a business problem it feels like versus like even i mean even the exam, i mean even the coding examples like you know where we're using matlab or octave i mean how do you feel about that i mean to me i would i would like it to be like like I would love if, you know, and, and I know there's courses out there and, you know, maybe something we talk about later, but, you know, if we, hey, we've got all this Netflix data, take this Netflix data, move it down to be able to pull and uh, get information. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with that. Like I understand, although I, I thought it was interesting. They showed a video, right, of the autonomous vehicle and how the neural networks were working. And I just thought it was interesting because they showed it from, again, I think this class, it stayed like 2011. Yeah. I want to say, and not, um, and I just keep thinking about where we are with regard to the cars and the autonomous vehicles. So that, that was the only kind of like interesting thing. I'm like, wow, we've, luckily we've come a long way, right? So they showed the car coming down the hill, but then there was a crossroad and it doesn't even show them like stopping. It just like keeps moving. So it shows how it can easily like navigate on the road and around corners and, or, um, yeah, corners. But it didn't ever show it like stopping. I was like, oh, it's going to hit. It's going to cause an accident. So it was interesting to see now, again, where we are with vehicles, what vehicles are able to do uh, with these neural networks and these different capabilities. So I thought that was kind of interesting in itself. Yeah. So this week uh, on the agenda was a uh, back propagation. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Propagation. Yeah. So uh, I, I did a little. I, I did a little side research on it and, and looking at part of it. And I can't remember if he covers this or not, but. That's kind of the basis for when we talk about Hadoop and, and MapReduce. He's like, that's, you know, that's kind of the basis where, you know, there's, there's some overlap there with back propagation because as the sample size gets bigger, that's where you're really talking about mapping and shuffling, shuffling data. So I don't, yeah. I don't remember if he, he mentioned that, uh, called that out per se, but I did, that struck, that struck my interest a good bit. 
Yeah, no, I agree. Right. And then, um, and the cost function, right? So all of those kind of things covered it. Another I didn't take a whole lot of notes. Function. How many cost functions have we gone through? I mean, is this the same one? I mean, I'm confused. Let me go back to my notes, right? And... I know. I was looking at mine. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. So, you know, going through the cost function and then going through the octave problems again, like I said, for me, I, I really would like to get a little, little more hands on, but at, at the end of the day, we preach fundamentals and you got to learn, you got to learn the fundamentals. <laughs> I agree. I, I agree. It still kind of like helps as we're having these discussions in my, in my job, it's been helping a lot and be like, okay, well, um, yeah, just talking about the different algorithms and the different capabilities and the different function. I've actually incorporated that in my conversations. And it's also been interesting because part of, part of my job is to really kind of define, um, or simplify, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. And what I've also realized is, again, just how much has changed from 2011 to 2017. 100%. And kind of like what we talked about, one of the biggest ex examples that I would come down to is if you Google like examples for machine learning versus deep learning, everyone basically uses the same example for both. And it's actually kind of frustrating. Um, here, it's a machine learning course, but we talk about neural networks, but then other people say neural networks is deep learning. So you're like, what is it? Does it matter? I don't know. I don't, it's very confusing. And it's also, I think the frustrating part that I have about this being so dated in the course, again, the algorithms don't change. It's math. It is what it is. Um, but how we use it overall or how we talk about it or the things that we do really varies in the real world. And I think that's just been a little bit frustrating for me because I don't know if it's, if it's confusing my brain a little bit or if it makes sense. I mean, we can't keep using autonomous vehicles for machine learning and email spam, right? But um, we keep going back to that. And uh, it would be nice to have some like better examples or better understanding of that clear definition between the two. I mean, I'm working on it, but this yeah. course helps and hasn't helped in that sense. Well, and part of the portion, part of the, my want to take this course was like, it was the original one and it's, you know, it was a right. really popular one to see where it was. I knew, I knew coming in that it was outdated and actually I was looking up, I think somebody put a list out on Twitter where it's like the other courses that he has um, that are kind of better. I mean, well, I won't say better, but just the, yeah. newer. cause like these are, you still yeah. look at this, like the things and concepts he's talking about were like the video. Yeah. You know, you know, the, the video about the car and some of the other pieces, that's going to be outdated. But these concepts, I mean, this is still what they're using, right? The cost function. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, that's the, that, that's, that's some, you know, the fundamentals that you, that you need to understand to be able to go forth and be able to use, you know, K nearest neighbor or, you know, what, whatever, whatever the other algorithms you're going to implement and right. understanding there. So gradient descent, all the other fun stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we're almost there again. This is week five. We're almost at that tipping point. There's six classes. I'm sorry, 11 classes. Oy, I wish there was just six classes. <laughs> next week, we're uh, going to have a party. So next week, yeah. we should at least wear party hats or something to, to, to celebrate, you know, hump, hump week through the course. So, yeah. we're, you know, we'll get over the hump. So it'll be our Wednesday of the course. And we'll, that'd be great. We'll, we'll continue on. Yeah, I love it. Man, we'll so see hopefully. if we can get everybody, man. I wonder, I wonder if Kyle... And uh, Brett, we, we need to try to get everybody on just one yeah. time. Yeah, we'll try to do that. We'll see what we can do. Um, oh, yeah, we'll try it out. That might work. <laughs> so so any, <laughs> right, tip, any tips for the week? No, I was going to say, weren't we betting? Isn't that last week that we were talking about a bet, whether or not we could get everyone on the call? You said we wouldn't. You said we wouldn't at I all we on the call, on, throughout the week. Now, I agreed with you it was going to be hard to get them this week, but I think at some point we will. You were saying it's not going to happen throughout yeah. the 11 weeks. So we'll see. Yeah, we're betting. I don't have any tips right now. If anything, I feel like I got my weeks confused because I know I did a blog post, and now I'm wondering if I labeled the blog post the wrong week. I don't know. I'm all over the place, but I don't have any tips. Sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Check the show notes. So anybody anybody watching this, uh, check the show notes. And um, I, th I, think her, I, th I think your blog post is about this week. And so it'll be if it is, it'll be in the show notes, and it'll be linked there, and you can kind of go and check it out. Okay, thanks. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And so, you know, if you're following along with the machine learning course, or if you want to find out what the other things that we're talking about on bigdatabeard.com, make sure you yep. subscribe. No way, great. no way, not no way to know unless you subscribe. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. All right. See you guys.